Hello, this is Dave Bosch coming to you guys with a three-part series of the Rush Protocol for hypotension and shock. Today we're going to talk just about the pump, but this is going to be a three-part series on the pump, the tanks, and the pipe. Uh, we're going to show through real-life examples how this type of ultrasound can really change your practice in hypotensive patients. And with always, uh, as always, uh, please come to our ultrasound skills day to practice these types of skills. So I want to start off by talking about what type of information we get when we do a rush exam. I think we would all agree that in hypotension, it would be very nice to know your patient's ejection fraction, their CVP, if they have right heart strain, or if they're bleeding or clotting or dissecting uh, before you leave the room. So we're going to talk about uh, a case that I had recently, and we're going to talk about the pump. I had a 78-year-old guy with MDS, aortic stenosis, and you sent in from the cardiology clinic for hypotension. No recent changes in meds, no illness, his EKG was normal, and he had no complaints other than feeling lightheaded. He was on Eliquis and a ton of cardiac meds. He was hypotensive when he checked in, but otherwise had normal vital signs. He looked fatigued, uh, but had really no other physical exam findings that led me to the obvious diagnosis. This, At this point, I typically, if I'm not using ultrasound, will um, use my best clinical guess at what's going on, uh, maybe give the patient a fluid bolus, um, or just start in with diagnostics uh, to kind of figure out what's happening. Um, and I think you should take this type of time to think about what your normal, normal workflow is in a patient who presents like this. While you're thinking about that, let's talk about the pump. Uh, so the heart, uh, as we look at it uh, on, a, um, on an ultrasound machine, uh, I'd like to start out with a parasternal long axis view. Um, this is the view uh, as it would be shown in a cartoon, um, and the associated ultra, ultrasound images above. Um, the first thing you're going to notice is, you know, or, or look for is, is there an obvious large pericardial effusion that may be causing tamponade? Uh, after relatively quickly determining yes or no, um, you can move on to something like a global cardiac function assessment. You can do this grossly just by looking at the overall function of left ventricle, or you can do it in a more detailed way. Uh, the more detailed way, which we teach at all the ultrasound skills class, uh, is is a, a technique called the E-point septal separation. Uh, this is a measurement of uh, the mitral valve as it moves close to the septum, and it's done in M mode. It's very accurate when compared to comprehensive transthoracic echo with a kappa value of 0.73. Um, subjective global estimates, just by looking at severe, moderate, or normal uh, ejection fraction, um, have a uh, lesser co coefficient. Uh, so an EPS measurement of less than 7 millimeters is essentially 100% sensitive at ruling out heart failure or significant heart failure. Another study done in 2019 uh, showed that about 120 patients underwent ED evaluation of EPSS versus TTE. Um, and again, showed similar findings of the 6 millimeter cutoff showing 100% negative predictive value. So this is a really useful test to rule out heart failure. If you have abnormal values, uh, you need to do more digging. Um, this is what it looks like in the parasternal long axis mode. Uh, the, right, uh, the right ventricle is up top. The left ventricle is down on the bottom. Uh, the left ventricular flow tract is in the middle. Um, the yellow arrow is where you want to put your M-mode cursor, and that anterior mitral valve leaflet is what you're looking for. This is what it looks like as you put the M-mode cursor through the mitral valve and turn M-mode on. Uh, the wave you see is, uh, is a mitral valve moving over time, and the two yellow lines uh, are the measurement that you're taking, so the septum on top and the mitral valve on the bottom. That distance is your EPSS. Moving forward after, after that, I switched to a four chamber view. Always remember if you're having trouble in this view to roll the patient onto their left side, it will usually help significantly. Uh, this is where you're gonna look for, again, global cardiac assessment or right heart strain. Um, this is a really nice picture of, uh, of the comparison of the right ventricle to the left ventricle, the size. Remember that the right ventricle is smaller and it should be about two thirds the size of the left ventricle. This is what right heart strain looks like. You can see, compared to the last picture, how dilated and bulging the right ventricle is, kind of compressing the left ventricle. So back to my case, uh, 
my patient, I was concerned, obviously, with his history of heart failure, that he might be the picture on the right. Uh, this is a parasternal long axis view with a very small right ventricle on the top, very dilated left ventricle on the bottom, uh, and maybe there's some aortic stenosis, who knows. But this, this picture on the right is a very, very uh, typical picture of a CHF patient. Um, on the left side uh, is a picture of a pericardial effusion. You can see kind of a squished heart in, in the middle with uh, fluid surrounding it, um, both anterior and posterior. So my, my point of care echo immediately showed a very large pericardial effusion. I immediately consulted the cardiology and they took him from Merton Swan. They cathed him and did a, uh, a pericard pericardiocentesis. He eventually had a window placed that drained 400 mils of bloody fluid. His vital signs normalized. So this was a case of a pericardial diffusion that I would have totally missed had I not pulled out the echo. Um, and I think this is a great example of how um, undifferentiated hypotension can be made somewhat simple with bedside ultrasound. So next time, we're going to talk about the tank, the IVC, and preload. And uh, hopefully you'll tune in uh, to the three-part series on hypotension. Thanks, guys.